Hey, my name's Dan. I am the singer and guitarist or one of the guitarists for the band Bill. Uh, and, and we are playing at Vinnie's in Southport this Saturday for Vilstock, our 10 year anniversary. Yeah, That's it. Uh, Chris. Thanks for how joining are we? us, Dan. Good to speak to you, brother. Man, it's been a while. It's good. It's been far too long, mate. So, as you say, this Saturday, <laughs> October 14th, Vinnie's Dive Bar on the Gold Coast will host. Veal stock, which is Veal's 10 year anniversary, mate. So you're pumped and ready to go. Yeah, I think so. It kind of hit me this morning that it's it's sneaking up. I uh, the, the Veal stock in general has been an idea we've had for about three years, and it kind of only hit me this morning that it's only a few days out, and the nerves kind of hit me this morning. Like I'm not oh shit, I'm not nervous to do it. It's just kind of that nerves of fuck that the show's coming. So, yeah. <laughs> Good. It's the show also features Gutter Fire, Dad Fight, The Green Whistle, Dog Shot, Voltura, Pyrokinesis, Chiffon Magnifique, and Beefed Up, mate. So, did the band handpick all the support bands that are playing with you? Yeah, we did, man. Um, it was it's kind of a mix of reasons between bands. Pyrokinesis and Voltura, they've played with us before, and we wanted to get someone on board that has played with us and they both you know the years they played with us they both smashed it did really well um dare yeah, fight are fucking awesome i've never met the guys but yeah fucking they i feel like or we all feel like they were a perfect match for us at least you know like i mean they're co-headlining they're they're on before us so i feel like that was a perfect match um yeah green whistle i don't know if you know noz the bassist in bill uh that's his band, they've been on hiatus for the last five years, so this is their first show back. Uh, yeah, everything else just kind of fell together. Very cool. And the band Beefed Up sounds like the perfect band to play with a band called Veal as well. It does sound perfect. They're a covers band. Uh, they're a mystery band, so no one quite knows who they are. Right. I think it might be their first show as well, so that should be interesting. Oh, what sort of covers do they play? Just the perfect <laughs> name to go with the band. So. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. From what I hear, a bit of NSYNC and some Britney Spears. <laughs> wouldn't expect much less. <laughs> no, I wouldn't expect much less. No, a um, bit of this and a bit of that. Tell us, it, it's Bill's 10th anniversary, guys, so t tell us a bit about the night and what you expect. Uh, so... I mean, the plan is we plan to play every song that we've got, every song that we've written. Uh, we wanted to make the most of it. It's For those who don't know, uh, Ville is a once-a-year band. Uh, we only play one show a year. Long story short, played the first year. Me and Chris being busy. By the time we played another show, it was the year, and a year later. And then that kept happening, and by the time, after three years, we kind of made it a one year thin. Uh, so for put it in context, this, our first show was 2014. So this might not be, you know, 10 year kind of thing, but it's our 10th show. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, that makes about as much yeah. sense as it does, yeah. Was, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so I guess, I mean, it's, it, it's hard to say what we're going to bring because we always, without you know, sounding cliche, we always try and bring our most to it because we only play the once a year. And for me, I'm not in any other band, so I only play one show a year. So for me, this really is my one chance to get on stage and just fucking let loose and be as much of a rock star yeah, as I can. So... That's pretty much it. like it, as much energy as we can, and every song that we've ever written, we're going to play it. So it's a long set. And is it just on the one stage, or is it held over a couple of stages? Like, is it going to be keep with the party atmosphere? Is it going to be balloons and clowns? And <laughs> uh, I haven't heard anything about clowns yet, but you know, I don't know. Jimmy, Jimmy's a crack up, so he might find a way to bring a clown into it. Uh, <laughs> there might be balloons. There might be balloons. Um, and yeah, we're using both stages. Uh, that was the plan from the very start. Is that's the, and that's the best thing about Vinny's is we got the two stages, so we can really utilize 
you know, very, very, very small version of Big Day Out in terms of, you know, we could fit that many bands in because one band finishes on the main stage and then straight away there's no fucking hustling about. It's the next band goes on and it's just, I mean, how many hours is it? Six hours. It's just six hours of bam, 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 bam. Music, bands, party, good atmosphere, drinking. You do what you want. Just don't get caught. Don't say that. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. That's bad. Hi. <laughs> That was one of those moments where I didn't think while I was talking. That's right, mate. It happens to me all the time. So we'll just leave it there and run with it. Yeah. <laughs> for a band who's been around for 10 gigs, uh, you haven't really, and over 10 years, you haven't really released that much material. The only thing I believe is uh, an EP that you released last year. We've released, so we've released two EPs. Uh, so when the band started, it was just me and Chris. Uh, we released an EP together called The Meeting. Uh, that was in 2014. I think we had we had that one recorded for our first show, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and then once Jimmy joined the band, we wrote a couple of songs as a whole with all four of us. Um, and so that's, I don't know what you call that, a single release. Like There was only two songs on that. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, we released um, Pleased to Meet You, which was our latest EP, which I believe the last interview I did with you, that was just coming out or had just come out. Just coming out. Um, but, I mean, in hindsight, you're correct. In 10 years, we've released two EPs and a random two song single, so it's not a lot. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's enough. It's enough to keep us going. <laughs> don't feel bad and you generally only fucking... rehearse a handful of times every year for your one annual show but this time you've increased that significantly is that a sign of professionalism or is it a sign of what to expect or i mean it's the amount of content that we're playing i guess uh we have i mean you're right we have a really bad habit of only jamming a handful of times a year and then without doubt you know there's weeks in there where you just don't get round a jam because someone's sick, someone's got something on, then we end up missing it there. And then before it's the week before the show and we're still fucking sloppy and we somehow pulled off on stage. Uh so this year we just kind of wanted we didn't want to fuck up what is a big show for us, you know. So we thought we'd chuck in the extra effort. Uh so I mean we've been jamming now for I think we started jamming in July. So I can't do math, but yeah, what's that? Four, five months, four months. I, like, I don't know. But yeah, we want. We just want to make sure we sounded good for this show because to us, this is an important show. Don't want to fuck it up. I don't want to come off that stage and think that was fucking terrible. We should have jammed more. So, yeah, make the most of it. I guess the big question is: Do you all still like each other after seeing that much more of each other? You've seen each other more this year than you have in the last five. Uh, I mean, Noz is tolerable. Uh, the other two, Chris and Jimmy, look, I'll get over it, but they're fucking annoying. <laughs> no, no. They're, I, I honestly, I, I wouldn't last this many years in a band with the same three dudes, especially, I mean, me and Noz have been, me and Noz and Chris have been playing in bands together since, well, me and Chris since we were 13 and 15. Uh, and Noz started jamming with us when I think I was 17, he was 16. So, like, I mean, if I'm not sick of him by now, that's not going to happen. So, yeah. <laughs> and a little birdie told me about a massive lolly jar you guys keep in the rehearsal room, too. What's, what's the go there? Hold on. Hold that thought. You're going to show me. <laughs> Hold on, my headphones are off. I can't hear. I, I didn't say anything. Not oh. once. <laughs> wow. There it is. You it's, wanted to see it? It's nearly empty. It's, it's very empty at the moment. Yeah, it's because we're all fucking fat assholes and we sit here eating them the whole jam. Oh, wait, hold on. Jimmy's throwing me something. Ah, it's something to <laughs> chop it up with. Well, the, the reason I bring yeah. that up... We all, take, we all take turns in chopping it up. 
reason I brought that up is because I came up with a good little gimmick for you for the show. Like, why don't you fill it up and raffle it off for the night? People got to guess how many lollies are in there. And whoever gets closest gets <laughs> their very own beer lolly jar. Fuck, that's not a bad idea. I mean, it's Jimmy's lolly jar, so I've got to leave it up to him. Yeah, well, good, good luck ending <laughs> oh, off that big I'll fella. bring that up with him. That's actually a fucking good idea. That's why you pay me the big money, yeah. mate. No, nah, I mean, <laughs> to be fair, I feel like I eat the most because I sit the closest to the fucking lolly jar and it's, I have a really bad sweet tooth, so it's not good. So, yeah. <laughs> But that's a fucking good idea. I might, I'll might i talk to the boys about that. Very cool. Now, it brings me on to Vinny's, guys. Like, Vealstock's being held at Vinny's, who are good friends of the band. You guys have got a bit of a history going back there with them. Yeah, we do. Um, I mean, the show, Veal started at Wallapalooza. Um, and, like, I mean, we had a good relationship with Wallapalooza and that. Uh, and, but... It wasn't that we didn't enjoy playing Wallapalooza. We just wanted to start kind of playing our own headline shows, you know, uh, give us a bit more freedom in that. Uh, I think we played, we only played one other venue other than Vitties. And then, and then after that, I think this is, fuck, I can't remember. I, this either our, I think this might be our fifth year at Vinnie's and they're fucking dead. One, it's an awesome venue. It's easy to get to. It's accessible. The sound's fucking great. The crew's great. I mean, there's no reason why we shouldn't play there. Like, they look after us. They're such good people to us. They look after all the bands. So I can't see why we shouldn't play there again. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and I know everybody always says this, mate, but tickets are going very quick. So it's strongly advisable that people pre-purchase them. So where can people get older tickets from? Uh, Oztix, if you go on Oztix uh, and just search up Vilstock, uh, you'll find it there. Uh, yeah, go through there, grab your tickets. Uh, otherwise, they'll be they will be available on the door at the night if it if there are tickets still available. Um, but yeah, from my understanding, there's quite a lot of tickets gone now. So hey, the more the merrier. Grab yourself a ticket. Let's go. Beautiful. And what's next for Veal after Saturday night, mate? Is Going to bunker down and write some new music, or are you going back into hibernation? Uh, I mean, we'll go into hibernation. Uh, I'm we're playing one new song this year. Uh, it's only a short, fast kind of punk song, so it's not too hectic. Uh, but I, I do tend to write quite a bit throughout the year, uh, and then bring stuff to jam. Once we start jamming, we. We might be shit at remembering our own songs, but we can write songs fast. So <laughs> we can only have our, you know, six weeks jam. We can still rock up with a new song. But in saying that, it's been a few years since the EP came out. So, I mean, I'd be keen to start writing another EP. Very cool. Now, before we let you go, Dan, I started up three new Spotify playlists based on songs from bands that we talked to just to get people to know them a little bit better. So... Using Veal songs gives a song for a playlist to get the party started, one for a playlist to save your marriage, and one for a playlist to potentially end your marriage. All right. Now, I I knew this was coming, and I still couldn't get this going because I did listen to your interview with Jack from Osaka the other day. All right, yeah, this, And I thought, <laughs> fuck. And I, I was like, fuck, I, I should probably try and uh, think of something. And fuck, it, it is a hard question when you put on the spot with it. Um, but... I can give you... What was the first one to get the party started? Yeah. Okay, so that one I feel is pretty easy. There's a song called Hot Wheels Derby. Uh, it's probably our fastest, punkiest kind of upbeat song. It's real... I mean, it's not about partying, but it's a very upbeat, fun song. So I feel like that would get the party started. Uh, and it starts with not screaming one, two, three, four. So, you know, that kind of feels <laughs> like... It's, as high as I can count. Uh, oh, one, one to save your marriage. Was that it? Yep. Uh, oh, oh, look, I'm just going through the songs in my head. Fuck, that's a really fucking hard one, isn't it? It's good because I've got one for the... Okay, so to, to kill your marriage, I'm going to go with Peach. I could eat a Peach for hours. 
purely because that song's about a prostitute. Right, yeah. Uh, it's not a song, not about a prostitute, I know. It's just kind of more, I don't know why I was, why I wrote it, but it's just, <laughs> it's about a, it's basically, it's about, basically about a druggy prostitute and yeah, it's not as bad as it sounds, but that we can't be a good thing to bring into your marriage. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, fuck. All right. Um, save your marriage, man. It's not like any of my fucking songs are even happy. I feel like they're all depressing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll go with I'll go with anatophobia. Uh, this is going to be a real fucking long shot here, but this is the ADHD brain thinking. It's a song about this made up phobia that somewhere in the world a duck is watching you. And we wrote the song about a murderous duck called Slender Duck and that that duck is out to murder you. So I'm going to say it's about two people coming together, husband and wife, working as a team to get away from a murderous duck. So there you go. <laughs> There's your one to save the marriage. <laughs> very good. That was really left me. Worked with that very well, mate. <laughs> I don't know how. I don't know how. <laughs> All right, Dan. Well, thanks very much for your time tonight, bro. Veal Stock Veal's tenth anniversary is on this Saturday, October fifteenth at Vinnie's in Southport. So get your tickets. It's going to be a cracker of a night, mate. And I'll see you there for a beer. Thanks, man. Much appreciate you taking your time.